This is a Toyota GR Yaris. And it has the word Yaris in its title, but it's not actually very much like a Yaris at all. Let me explain. There have been road-going rally-inspired specials in the past, but none quite like this. Toyota built the GR Yaris not because it had to homologate it, just because it wanted to. And underneath the unique widened bodywork is a unique platform, a mashup of Toyota's two smaller platforms with independent suspension all round and aerodynamics created by engineers from its World Rally Championship team. This car's roof is some two inches lower to the ground than a regular Yaris. It has a manual gearbox and the most powerful three-cylinder engine in production in the world, with 257 horsepower from its 1.6 litres. It also has the first proprietary four-wheel drive system that Toyota has developed for a road car in two decades, which can be set with rear bias torque distribution and, with the track package fitted here, augmented with torque-sensing limited slip differentials for both axles. That track pack also brings stiffer dampers and Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres, on forged alloy wheels. It is special then, but so is the car we've brought along to put it up against. Can the Yaris be a cut price version of the ultimate four wheel drive supercar, the Nissan GTR, which is here in its latest, greatest, and perhaps last Nismo form? The GTR Nismo recently got a batch of changes for the 2021 model year. Its 3.8 litre turbo engine has been altered with new GT3 race car turbos that spin up more quickly. So while it makes 592 horsepower, it should be more responsive. That it's lighter than it was before, thanks to an increase in carbon fibre in its body should help too. Although at 1703 kilos, the GTR still weighs 400 kilos more than the Toyota. The latest GTR runs softer dampers than it used to as well, which might be handy on a bumpy circuit on a very wet day, but less useful could be the changes to its tyres. There is one less groove on the Dunlop Sportmax tyres, which increase rubber on the road by 11%, and with a new compound said to be 7% more grippy, while a rounder shoulder is meant to put more tyre in contact with the road and increase cornering force by 5%. That is, however, in the dry, and I suspect none of that was designed with a very wet, very short circuit in mind on a near freezing cold day in Wales. But let's see. And so the question is, what's it like with all of those bespoke, expensive changes? And the answer is a huge, huge, huge amount of fun. So you can put the four-wheel drive system through various modes. You can run it in normal, which has a very slight front bias. Track, which is 50-50 front and rear, or sport, which is what I've got it in now, which puts a little bit more power to the back than it does to the front. It has a really sneaky six-speed manual gearbox. An engine that makes a slightly unusual sort of noise. It feels like sort of half a 911 at low revs and slightly weird at higher revs but it really does rev to the other side of 7000 there's plenty 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 of power up there i think somebody's had this car on a rolling road and they think that although it's supposed to make 260 something as standard it's more like 270 270 plus so it's got a lot of specific output it doesn't weigh very much rides curbs very well rides really nicely on the road as well great control a little bit of lean it's just silly silly amounts of fun now what would you like it to do more of i wonder it wouldn't hurt if it was just more adjustable on the throttle in the same way that say an old mitsubishi evo was where you turn in go sideways you get back on the power it pulls itself straight again this doesn't do that quite so much but i think what it does do is have more composure than some of those later Evos and the like, which were really hardcore. This is a slightly more rounded proposition. Now, given the conditions in that I can't see very far in front of me, and it's very, very slippery under tyre, I don't think any of these laps are going to be setting records on fastestlaps.com, but it will be interesting to see what the two cars do on the same day in the same conditions if a gtr is anything like as composed and mature and capable as this 
I will be really, really surprised. You can just feel that rear bias just sort of straightening the car as you get all the power out of a corner, and this car is absolutely at its best on the power. It's got so much traction, so much grip, it's so much composure. And to have all of that for the money, I think it's a real hot hatch hero of our times. Right, and so to the GTR, the original four-wheel drive mega beastie. Wow, yeah, okay, instantly it's keen to move around. I am gonna put the dampers into comfort mode to see if I can put even more weight onto the outside set. It doesn't ride over those curbs with the same deftness as the Toyota. It certainly picks up speed just as well. Yeah, and it's quite lively. I don't suppose we'll get any heat properly into these tyres. Under braking, it just immediately wants to... The ABS immediately kicks in and the car wants to move around. It's a much livelier experience in these conditions. In a way, I do wish the Toyota did that a bit more, had a bit more rear bias when you're in sport rear. It is fast, this car. That's also the thing about the GTR, wasn't it? When it came out, it gave you supercar levels of performance for not supercar money. These days, it does cost supercar money, but, God, it's so nice. It does also still give you supercar plus, perhaps, levels of performance. I don't know which bona fide supercars. I say bona fide supercars. This is one when you consider the depth of engineering, but it's made by a mainstream manufacturer, which is, you know, the slight anomaly with it. But if you were in a Ferrari or Lamborghini, would either of them be anything like as capable as this in these conditions? Okay, so even in all soft, it's still not as pliant and friendly as the Yaris. And that's not all down to the power, that's, that's also down to the amount of wheel travel that it has or doesn't have. I may put it through into one of the stiffer modes just to see what it's like, but my guess is it will get even more angry and keen to slide around, but we'll see. Right, so that's R on the dampers. It's no less edgy, but there is, you don't get the body movements with it, so actually maybe it is preferable, even in very wet conditions in which you think actually slackening things off a little would be better. It probably is better in R mode than it is in the softer modes, just because body movements are better tied down. I mean, it, the movements are quicker, but they're also regained more quickly. Now there's a bit of warmth into the brakes and tyres, not that much, but you can start to lean on them a bit more and the car becomes a little bit more faithful and trustworthy. It's still very adjustable on the throttle, but much better than I would have expected. Perhaps still not quite as amiable as the Toyota, but there is, it is finding grip, it is finding traction, but it is also finding real adjustability. It's pushing on down that straight. I'm not entirely sure what speed it's getting up to, but uh, it's a fairly rapid one. And this corner is great, as you just trail the brakes in, it gets the nose as planted as it's going to be, and then it straightens its line really nicely on the throttle. I mean, it is an aging car, the GTR, but it still has absolutely loads of moves. It's really something. Steering's great too, yeah, it's quite light, probably lighter than the Toyotas, but you get a lot back and you know when the car starts to move around and you can just feel as it starts to push into understeer in the sort of higher speed corners. Is the Toyota a cut price GTR? They are not without similarities, but I think even quite a lot of years on from its original launch, character of the GTR remains the same and there is still nothing else quite like it. 
And so then to the scores on the doors. It's worth bearing in mind that you can't read too much into this generally. It is a short, bumpy track on a lousy day. Change basically any single thing and it would be a very, very different result. But the fastest lap I set in the Toyota was faster than the Nissan. Yes, Yaris beats Nismo GTR, though by less than half a second. 48.9 seconds versus 49.3. Some of the numbers are actually very close. Through the slowest corner on the circuit, the right-hander at the bus stop, the Nissan carried one extra mile an hour, 27 versus 26. It also pulled a quicker speed, 108 miles an hour versus 101, down the hangar straight. Both cars brake similarly with the Toyota slightly better, with a maximum of around 0.7 g deceleration in both cars, which goes to show just how miserable the conditions were, because I would expect well over 1 g in both of them in the dry. But it's the better traction and lighter weight that really shows in the fast glue pot corner leading onto the runway straight where the Toyota scores. Its apex speed through there is around 56 miles an hour versus 50 miles an hour for the GTR which rapidly wants to edge into oversteer which is very good fun but not as quick. So even though eventually the GTR pulls a higher speed in a straight line it can't quite catch the Yaris down that straight overall. On this day and on this day and this circuit and in these conditions only though elsewhere it would be very very different so thank you for joining us if you've enjoyed this track battle we have many more we have sensible car reviews when there are motor shows we will go to them we're at autocar.co.uk all the time we're here most weeks join us again soon do appreciate your support give us a like and a subscribe why don't you and i'll see you in the comments or next time